we have our customers are the people that we pay, right? Our coworkers are our customers, right? So if, if we are messing up people's check all the time and we're messing up their money, they're going to lose trust in payroll, mm-hmm. right? Welcome to our podcast. It's about payroll. We're your hosts, Brian Escobar and Walter William Duncan III. Whether you're new to the payroll game or a seasoned veteran, we have something for you. Welcome back, folks. This is episode 91 of It's About Payroll. We are quickly gaining on that 100 episode mark. How you doing today, sir? Yeah, I'm good, man. We're almost at that century mark, huh, man? That, is that a century mark? <laughs> wow, man. We are almost there. Yo, we got great accolades from David Turetsky. He's from um, HR Data Labs, the host, and he's a CHRO of salary.com. And he gave us a amazing compliment. He's guys, you guys have run up on 100 episodes and he's, you should be really proud of yourself. That's a, a milestone for podcasts. Yeah. You know, how'd that yeah, make that, you feel when he said that? That that humbled me, first of all, and it, it made me feel proud. Yep. And a little emotional. I realized hey, from what he said, he was like, hey, he was happy to partner with us and that, that, it, a lot of podcasts aren't sustainable. Even some of the podcasts that we see out there now may be fading away. So it's just for us to be like a mainstay with our listeners and to continue having the growth that we're having. Man, it's just it's a feeling of being like just grateful. Right? Yep. Yeah, just absolutely. Grateful, man. Absolutely. Yeah. Same here, man. Same. It was just great. And for like you said, the emotional part, I was getting choked up on that call, on that recording with him because. Yeah, he was like a mentor to us when we first started this. He was giving us advice on how to do the show. And did it. so, anywho, getting into it, man. What you got for us today, bro? I know you got need this to put some work into these show notes and Here getting the both, show man. ready. Yeah. So we have some one of the things I just recently saw. Leave the world behind on Netflix. Check it out. I'm gonna check um, it out. Yeah. It, it is really good, and it highlights something that I wanted to talk about today and something that we see growing rapidly and it's like cyber attacks, man. Yeah. That's these cyber attacks that are happening. It's, it's also a, a new warfare tactic yep. that yep. other countries are using and stuff like that. But before we get into that, I have a random question for you today, okay. man. I was thinking about minimum wage the other day and I was sitting on my couch, you know, that how federal minimum wage and is 725 and then there's other minimum wages that are based on state and stuff like that yep. or even some states have even like some territories that yep. have our regions yep. that have separate wages and stuff but i was thinking should minimum wage be based on industry so if you're an actor interesting this should be your minimum wage if you're a payroll person th- this is the minimum wage so as soon as you come in this is how much you should at least make and right. that's, and or should it just or should the system stay the same? I know it's random, but I was just thinking about that. Well, it's a, pay, it's a payroll pros random thought, right? Yeah, this, yeah. this is what payroll for like HR and payroll people be like. I don't. That's an interesting question, man. I, I think that it should def. I think that minimum wage should definitely be re- revamped, updated. I don't know what the is because I'm sure that we can argue a million different ways of what it looks like and folks we could have all kind of arguments i would definitely want to see some data i would definitely want to and what we need to do is talk about this on it's about your paycheck and kind of get into the nitty gritties and that'll be the next episode for you guys okay because there's a lot right there's a lot here yeah there's a lot because i'm in my head right now you want to dive deep into it i want to dive deep yes i want to dive deep into it now and i want to start looking at the data points and start talking about that because it's a really good question and and what Federal, that's the part that drives me crazy. Federal minimum wage is seven twenty-five. And yes, it's about to be twenty twenty-four and it's still seven dollars and twenty-five. <laughs> and then and then it makes me think about what Tabitha said when she had her restaurant, right? Yes. And for those of you who missed the episode, we had Tabitha Brown on, vegan influencer, actor, just all around amazing personality. America's she was talking mom. off America's mom. She was talking finances with us. And she said that she paid her restaurant employees minimum wage. Now, you're going to, you're going to, as a payroll person, you're going to be like, yeah, well, they get tipped minimum wage. No, she didn't pay them the tipped minimum wage. She paid them a normal minimum wage, Mm -hmm. which is unheard of really. And definitely not a common practice in the restaurant industry because, and she said it one, she likes to bless people, right? So she's going to bless her staff. And two, she's, well, 
what if days she's trying to factor in the days that people maybe don't come into the restaurant, your slow days in the restaurant industry that and that happens, right? Your slow days or whatever the case is, if maybe one day is this all takeout and your waitresses and waiters are not getting money. Anyway, that's what it made me th- right and that and you that's so I'm, I'm already diving down this hole. What? <laughs> that's a so should it be based on industry? <sighs> it definitely needs to be revamped. Yes. What do you think? This episode is presented by Time Track Go, the simply better employee time clock software that is going to make your life easier. In addition to the unique graphical employee time card that helps you quickly identify and fix mistakes, Time Track Go is excited to announce it's now compatible with QuickBooks Desktop, providing effortless data transfer and reduced errors. Time Track Go will not only save you time and money each week, but the easy to understand user interface and the ability to turn a tablet into a time clock will get you and your team up and going in just minutes. Find out what a simply better solution can do for your business. To learn more and sign up for your 14-day free trial, go to www.timetrackgo.com. That's www.timetrackgo.com. Or you can call 888-321-9922. That's 888-321-9922. Let's go. In a nutshell, it needs to be revamped. I think it's a great topic. And I I was doing the same thing last night on a sheet of paper. So I have notes on a sheet of paper. I was just writing different things down because I was just like, man, like that would change everything. That would change like a lot of minimum wage. But I think, but I think it's Americans and workers are very deserving of it. Absolutely. I, I do believe that there should be a higher minimum wage. And I don't think it should be any less than like forty thousand, forty five thousand dollars a year for the minimum for every American. That's what I feel, no matter That's, what type of work you do. Yeah, there you go. So you got me going now because I I think in New York the food industry does have a separate minimum wage. Okay. Industry. I'm sorry, guys. We're just. This is what happens when payroll people start <laughs> thinking about stuff on Saturday night on their couch. Hey, man. We this these shows. Some podcasts are like two hours long, man. Wait, so you, you're right. Thank you. Yeah, you're right. Because one of my favorites is Drink Champs, and uh-huh. it takes like two, three hours. I'm like, oh my god. Yeah. It takes me. It takes me days to listen to that yeah. episode. Yeah. Those episodes. Um, I can't really find it. Uh, other than the tip, what came up right away is tipped employees, which is yeah. one that we were talking about. But we're going to yeah. dive deep. This is going to be the next episode. Of it's about your paycheck. Um, I'm hyped for it now. Yes, that's that'll be available on it's about your and all podcast platforms and YouTube. Yes. All right. Let's get into today's show. We are yeah. talking cybersecurity. We found two great articles that are that really highlight the dangers what happened right let's just get get into it it's cybersecurity, right and it's mm-hmm. relevant for payroll folks because we're a high price what do they call it a high ticket target or something like that yeah so the first one is u.s warns iranian terrorist crew broke into multiple u.s water facilities mm-hmm. so the key takeaways here are and we'll tie it together, folks. Don't worry. Iran link, linked cyber attacks exploit programmable logic controllers, also called PLCs. An Iranian cyber criminal affiliated with Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corp. There's a lot of acronyms in this article. IRGC targeted multiple water systems and operational technology in the U.S. Okay. The attack specifically exploited Israeli-made programmable logic controllers, such as the Unitronics Vision Series, used across various industries, okay? And what did they do? They exploited default passwords as the weak link, right? Come on, man. You're, you're... Yes, yes. You, we talk about this all the time, right? We have... we. We've run across many people. I'm not gonna call out my my anybody specific, but people in our <laughs> lives across family, coworkers. Then password one. What's your password? Password, password one two three. 
what password. password what's the pa- no what is the password password no what i'm asking what's the pa- password yeah. oh, one two three God. four <laughs> <laughs> well don't do that don't do that right yeah. the the joint advisory from the FBI, the NSA, the EPA, and the CISA, which is, gosh, I, 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 I put it here somewhere, CISA, uh, okay, Cybersecurity I'll... and Infrastructure Security Agency. Wow. Okay. Yes. All of these acronyms <laughs> and, and the Israeli National Cyber Directorate revealed mm-hmm. that the group called Cyber Avengers utilized a straightforward tactic exploiting default passwords for internet accessible PLCs, the programmable logic controllers. Okay. And despite the IRGC's designation as a foreign terrorist organization in 2019, the attack did not require sophisticated tactics so, so it's just like it sounds like it was just a normal oh this is just easy like an 11 year old fruit. could have done it low hanging fruit low hanging easy. fruit <laughs> a young hacker could have done it they just wow. opened the first book in hacker 101 and they were like let's ooh, let's do this one yeah and folks that oh, i'll get to it i'll get to my commentary okay mm-hmm. Another thing is recently a cyber attack on Pennsylvania Water Authority, the Municipal Water Authority of Alakipa in Pennsylvania. Oh, Alakipa. Alakipa. (laughs) Alakipa. You say tomatoes. In Pennsylvania, (laughs) fell victim to a cyber attack, forcing operators to switch to a manual control. The attackers left a warning related to ongoing israel hamas war Mm. indicating a geopolitical motive Mm. okay it's not this is and wall opened it up with we're we're at war right the the next world war might just be online that's what's going on right now it's happening and it's happening already right Mm -hmm. the scary stuff too i'm getting chills (sighs) but it all ties back yeah it's a reality it's unfortunately it's a reality so but see, they knew this were coming, right? So before we continue, like, yeah, yeah. I don't know if you know that show that John Stewart and Trevor Noah used to host, like a daily I'm show. The, yes, oh, the Daily Show. Yeah, of course. Yeah, there. I remember Trevor when it was when Trevor was hosting, and, and a couple of years back, he had a this older politician come on there and talk about his book, and it was years ago before this stuff started happening. He said, mm-hmm. "You and I even talked about it back then." Oh gosh, um, and he said that cyber warfare is going to be the new warfare in the next coming years and he, he told it he said it in his book and it seems like everything he said is coming to fruition right now wow yeah um despite the breach there has been no observed access to operational systems or impact on the provision of safe drinking water offering a silver lining the extent of the threat remains unclear as plcs programmable logic controllers may be rebranded and used in various industries. So basically, this is what they're attacking. They don't know what else was going to happen because they use these same devices, the same hardware in other industries. So we have we got to be like, if you're in an industry that uses these PLCs, you guys have to heighten your security. The call for immediate action, the, the CISA, CI, CISA, Executive Assistant, again, a Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, the Executive Assistant there, or I'm sorry, Executive Assistant Director for Cybersecurity, name is Eric Goldstein, urged organizations to take fundamental steps to secure their operational technology environment. The key recommendations include avoiding exposure of PLCs to open internet and eliminating the use of default passwords. Duh. Holy, come on. (laughs) The widespread vulnerability and ongoing threat is a search out there indicates hundreds of internet connected unitronics devices globally underlying a widespread vulnerability. So they're saying there's a lot of these switches out there. So they gotta, gotta address that. The cyber Avengers is identified as a primary group targeting Israel, Israeli made gear in U S critical infrastructure, but other pro Iran groups, Hajo, Hajo, I can't pronounce it. Cyber Two fan group and Yar Gon. I can't pronounce any of these. So other <laughs> pro Iran groups have also claimed attacks. Folks, these terrorists have moved. They're, they're just like you said. They're moving to a cyber warfare. They realize 
we don't even have to do some of the things we did in the past. We could just do this. Yep. Now, some of the solutions, and this is where it hones in on the payroll and HR folks, right? Because we have to be mindful of these solutions. Remember, the biggest thing for cybersecurity is education. Yes. Is education implementing these tactics mm -hmm. actually doing these things right yeah because change isn't change until we change so we yeah. can know all this stuff and oh yeah i know about cybersecurity. but if you haven't taken the cybersecurity courses if you haven't exposed your teams to the cybersecurity trainings and if you haven't implemented anything you haven't done anything knowing is not changing so the first one is enhanced cybersecurity measures. Of course, organizations must enforce robust cybersecurity measures, including the avoidance of default passwords and limiting PLC exposure to yes. the internet. Yes. Right yes. now, let's. The passwords, there man. you go. Thank you, sir. That's what I wanted to zero in on because I don't. It'd be interesting to see. It would be. I think that the evolution of this is. For, forcing people to change their password whenever you can. Some systems yes. and softwares do that. They like yes. they'll give, hey, here's your password to get in. But if yes. hey, you can't once you log in, it forces you immediately to change it. So I think that's like an evolution in this. Like we have to get to a point where we're forcing users to change their passwords, and it has to be those good pass. How they when you type in a password and it says, oh, fair, good, excellent, and mm -hmm. strong, right? And it has to. I think it has to force it to be strong, right? Yeah. That's just my random thought. Another yeah. one is, again, we're talking solutions to this problem, is implementation of mitigations. E immediately implement mitigation outlined in joint advisories, cybersecurity agencies is crucial. So basically yes. these joint advisories, the CISA, yep. they all have protocols, they have recommendations. Biden even put one out. I'm not leaning political wise, folks. This is not a political show. Okay. Mm -hmm. But Biden did put out a, I believe it was specifically for the healthcare industry, cybersecurity guidelines. Go get all of the info that you can out there and start implementing these measures okay yep. number three is vigilance across sectors of course given the potential impact of various industries vigilance is required not only in the yes. water systems but in finance hr energy food beverage health care every industry yes every industry. Yes. So, so that's, the, that's what I'm saying. We're getting these attacks on our water supply because mm -hmm. water impacts everything. Farms, like every, we use water for a lot of different things to make things go in this yep. country. So yep. they're going to attack those things that have the greatest impact. And a lot of, and, and the thing here is that a lot of these places still are, have updated to the digital world. Yes. Right. We know some of them. Now, some places are still paper yeah. data entry and stuff yes. like that. Yes. But, and those places will probably be okay in some sort of way. But for us that put have data on the internet and the cloud and stuff like that, this is yep. extremely important. Yep. I, I'm not aware of any business that doesn't have to use something a computer, digital. something mm -hmm. digital to function. Yeah. Right. And if you can minimize that, if you're great, that's awesome. I'm not aware mm -hmm. of it. Like, let us know what that is. <laughs> um, for real. Cause you know, I, I'm not, yeah. So, also, number four for the last solution for that uh, article, international collaboration. This one I really like. Given the geopolitical nature of these attacks, international coll collaboration in cybersecurity efforts is essential to stay ahead of evolving threats. Because think mm -hmm. about it, right? And it's, I, I, I think it's down in the article you're going to cover where it says, imagine if we're all sharing our data, and not our data, but our the attacks, if we, oh my gosh, I got attacked and this is how it happened. And this is what they attack. And a lot of, if every company shared that data, we would be in a better place. And I, I think about Ray Dalio again and how his kind of strategy was like, yo, we have to share the errors. We have to share the errors. We have to learn from it, right? We can't be afraid of saying, yo, I made a mistake, but look at what we learned from it, right? Mm -hmm. That's the, too often yep. people are they're too so scared. But anyway, that's the point. We need to learn from it. And what was I going to say about it too? Dang. Anywho, it'll come back to it'll me. It'll come back, yeah. Yeah. But that I really like that. I really like that, the collaboration piece for it. If everybody is putting it up. Oh, that's what I was going to say. Because think about the recent direct deposits that were late. Was that truly a glitch? Or was that an or, attack? 
Was it an attack? Because think about it, not every company wants to share that they were been attacked. Yes, they don't want to share. Like it's bad for business. That's right. It is, and they so they don't want to share that because can you imagine if the direct whoever that direct deposit impact they were like that they would immediately pull out of that company. You know what I mean? In conclusion, some the recent wave of attacks underscores the urgency for critical infrastructure operators to fortify their defenses against increasingly sophisticated threats, addressing fundamental ver- vulnerabilities and implementing a robust security system, cybersecurity system measures, and it is imperative to ensure the resilience of essential services and infrastructure. Why? If you're asking yourself, dang, yo, this is a great story, but guys, it's it's not payroll. But isn't it? Right? Yeah. If payroll's it life impacts anybody, man. Water's water is life, yes. right? If these attackers are get going pay, let's attack them where it hurts the, what is fundamental. Their water. Yes. Their food. Yes. Right? Their and water, money. And, and water impacts food. All of it, right? It's all a circle. Think about it. Damn, you know what's funny, man? These the, the timing of things because I was just watching it's a holiday season. One of my holiday movies, and is we always and people debate it is Die Hard, right? Yeah. Die Hard is a Kaye. Christmas. Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> and I I watched um I was watching all of them the other day, and there's one where it's digital. The most recent one, I think he did with like his son and the move, blah, blah, blah. They were talking about, it was cybersecurity attacks. It was a fire sale. Mm -hmm. They call it a fire sale and blah, blah, blah. And it basically, it means attacks on your infrastructure. Yes. Right. So think about that folks. They're going, they're going after our water. If water is life, pay, we know payroll is life as payroll and HR folks, we have to be hyper vigilant, 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 hyper vigilant. Yes. In these areas and really protect. There's a really good, I just want to make a quick mention before Walt gets into his piece is there's a really good report I found out there on Splunk.com. It will be, the link will be in the show notes and they are talking about 50 the top 50 cybersecurity threats. Yeah, I said it, five, zero, 50 of them. The top 50, mind you, there are probably more, but these are the oh, top 50. Yes. Yeah. It's, don't, it's Guys, it can be overwhelming, ladies and gentlemen. It can be yeah. overwhelming to think about this, but we absolutely have to get in. We have to, tr- uh, what is it, teach ourselves. We have to understand what this stuff is about. I get I get too worked up right now. I'm sorry. No, you're good, bro. <laughs> so the one that I want to share with this, because this one is the one that I believe that I really folk they use on unwitting people we don't know. It yeah. it have it's like social, what do they call it? Social something, social attack or whatever. I forget the name of it. But the report is labeled it account takeover, right? An account takeover is considered one of the more harmful ways to access a user's account. The attacker typically poses as a genuine customer, user, or employee, eventually gaining entry to the accounts of the individual they're impersonating, okay? In 2022 alone, 84% of organizations fell victim to identity related breaches. I will repeat that. In 2022, a year ago, 84% of organizations fell victim to identity related breaches with 96% of them reporting that the breach could have been avoided or minimized by implementing identity centric security. Mm. That it, that's it. That's it. Yeah. Right. Without the correct technologies and policies in place, identifying anomalous user behavior can be incredibly tricky. As a result, these attacks often go undetected as the authentic authentication performed by a bad actor can look the same as a legitimate user, depending on how expensive the identity and access wow. management framework in place is. Wow. Yep. Folks, we have, we, we talk about it. This is, this is a part of our normal conversation now in payroll, yeah. but we as have to should, be vigilant be. and as, as it, it should be. be. And right. And like you said, there's going to be, Right, like a payroll cybersecurity person in in 
coming. It's developing, right? We're, Absolutely. It's going to happen, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. We're laying the groundwork for it right now. Yep. So thank you for letting me share, folks. Walt is going to share this next one, which, again, hits right in home. All right. Thanks, Brian. We're passing the baton. All right. So the one I'm, I'm going to talk about is a ransomware attack that was against 60 credit unions. This article was done by MSN. So it's a recent work. A recent ransomware attack has wreaked havoc on 60 credit unions, which caused widespread outages, as reported by MSN. Wow. The Federal Financial Institutions Examination Council, FIEC, How's that for with the eight? acronyms? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they, they they have confirmed the incident, uh, signaling a concerning escalation in cyber threats targeting financial institutions. So going back to what you just said about uh, at the end of uh, the other article is yep. how those uh, paychecks, right? And maybe that was an attack targeted at those could places. Be. And yes, know. right. Potentially, maybe it could be, and they just didn't want to say it. So, mm -hmm. yeah, let's get into this, man. So, what's the first key point? The scale of the impact, right? So, the ransomware attack affected a significant number of credit union 60, leading to operational disruptions and potential financial risk for customers. So, I'm sure that those people that were impacted that work for their pay, their hard-earned money, and that they, their payroll checks go into were impacted greatly and who knows what information may have been captured if any because sometimes they let you know like they give you a, a, a highlight you'll see an article but you have to actually read the details or click on the link because they're supposed to legally tell you exactly everything that's happened they may just tell you in an in a article the article may not have all the details of what was actually done like you were saying so it's something that you want to do your research on it was confirmed by the federal agency, the FFIEC, Federal Financial Institutions Examination Council, a federal agency overseeing financial regulatory activities, has officially acknowledged the attack, highlighting the severity of the situation. So I guess this organization is the, the standard for as far as the federal part of it is. And so for them to, to confirm it, I'm letting you know that it's a serious problem. Yep. Financial institutions and services are under siege. The incident underscores the growing vulner vulnerability of financial services to cyber threats, emphasizing the need for enhanced cybersecurity measures across the industry. So like we were just speaking about in that last article, the last piece, it's like we need to do better. And, I, and I'm not going to get into it here because it's part of the solutions, but we need to really understand what's really going on, right? Mm -hmm. So what's some p potential ramifications of this? With credit unions serving as vital component components of the financial system, the attack raises concerns on broader implications for financial st stability and customer trust. We're in the service industry, right? We do payroll. We serve someone else. We have our customers are the people that we pay, right? And our coworkers are our customers, right? So if, if we are messing up people's check all the time and we're messing up their money, they're going to lose trust in payroll, mm -hmm. right? Immediately. Our, our bosses and the powers that be are going to lose trust in payroll if we have all these issues, right, constantly. And so the same thing goes for these financial institutions and services. If they're constantly getting hacked, if they're constantly having security issues, they're going to lose, like you said, bro, it's bad for business. Yep. You're going to lose that customer trust. And if you don't have customers... You don't have a business. Yep. Before we continue, we'd like to take this opportunity to invite you to connect with us and to stay engaged with the It's About Payroll community. If you want to be the first to know when we drop new episodes, hit that subscribe button on your favorite podcast app. And don't forget to share with your friends and family. If you enjoy more exclusive content, head to It's About Payroll.io. We've got three new exciting shows for you. It's about your paycheck, which caters to the employee. Safe Talk, which is a safe space for professionals like you and myself to have those tough conversations. And the News Pod, which we keep you informed and updated on the latest happenings in the world of payroll, finance, HR. Thank you for being a part of this journey. Now let's jump back in and discover the power of payroll. All right, so what are some of the immediate concerns with this stuff? Service distribution disruptions, yeah, heck yeah. Right? 
customers uh, may experience disruptions in accessing their funds, accessing their accounts, being able to transfer money from some place to from point A to point B. Yep. Are are utilizing online banking services? H have you ever even really noticed like sometimes like well, some of these apps are updating and stuff like that? Maybe that might be because they got an attack. Yep, we don't know. So just keep that in mind. If you're constantly getting something on your phone, that may be your financial institution taking measures to try to protect you from an attack. The attack poses potential financial risk, both for the credit union and their members. Enough said. The we like you said earlier, we need to have that cybersecurity vigilance, right? We need to have that industry collaboration. And it underscores the importance of collaboration within the financial industry to share threat intelligence and to bolster collective cyber security defenses. Because a lot of these financial services and financial institutions, they're, they have transactions between each other. Yeah. People transfer yep. from bank to bank or, or this bank sends money to this bank for their, for this person's pay. And there's yep. a lot of transactions that are going on. So they're all interconnected. Yep. Think about that. Yep. Go ahead, go ahead. What you no, say? I was going to say, even in random industries, because this is all just collaboration within the financial industry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like we said from the previous article, is if there was, if this uh, agency is should be collecting it from all industries, everybody getting attacked and just analyzing those threats mm -hmm. so we can start building profiles. I, I'm thinking, oh, wow, we could, it could be like a CSI. What was that one? Yeah. The other one, criminal minds, yes. criminal, right? Now they, now yes. it's, it's a whole new, it's, it's a whole new serial killer threat, yeah. they, but they're not killing. They're just killing our systems. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, my God. No, you're good. That's, that's <laughs> a good, that's a good point. That's a good point, man. I, I think that we really just need to be more mindful. Yeah. And I'm going to add one at the, I'm going to add one yeah, to ahead. this as far as like one of the solutions, because the industry collaboration was a solution and this one, the customer awareness, which yep. is big, big piece of it. Yep. Yes, yep. your the the industry, the service, the whatever person uh, that has the data, they need to do their part. Whether that's your employer, your bank, or whatever, they need to do their part to protect you. But you also have your a role in this. Absolutely, right? we have a role as payroll providers and payroll processors to protect people's data. We shouldn't send an email with someone's unprotected. Uh, past sensitive data or information no PII. To anybody else. Yep. no pi w2s no none no. of that right we should be mindful of other people's information i don't think we own. should even be mailing out w2s anymore just to be honest but yeah. that state regulations prevent us from forcing it one way so mm -hmm. that's a separate matter yeah that's a good we can talk about that too i was just gonna say we can talk about that <laughs> <laughs> we could talk about that as well sir yep. the one that i wanted to add here is Another solution is sharing, sharing the information. If you find out something that's happened and you find out a financial institution that your friends, your loved ones, your associates may, your coworkers may be connected to. And sometimes people are so busy, they don't have time to see these alerts. I remember the conversations I've had, like, hey, have you seen what's going on with this or going on with that? And and I've talked to people good, at work. It's a good call out, yeah. And they're like, no, I had no idea. I'm just Social. so busy. Yeah, so I'm we just, should socialize it more. Yes, we, yeah. we, we should share this more. And yes. I know a lot of people do that. You see those people, like, and there's a lot of false information out there too. So be mindful of that. Yep. Make sure you get your stuff from legit sources and like confirm sources and stuff like that, but share information. Yeah. Educate one another, educate yep. yourself. I think that's a big piece of it. And it's tied into that customer awareness, but mm -hmm. it's that education piece. The government should educate the people more and, and be real with the people, but yep. don't not to go down the political stream. So I'll end it there. Yeah. You know, <laughs> no doubt. So what I will say is that this is a stark reminder of the potential ripple effects on individuals and employees, uh, particularly in the context of financial and our payroll systems. As cyber threats uh, continue to escalate, the integrity of financial institutions, including credit unions, becomes crucial uh, for ensuring the timely and secure disbursement of payments, of payrolls, of salaries, meaning this stuff can cost people's pay to be delayed in yep. layman's terms, right? Adrian Resto, he was a great payroll professional, great guest. He had a, a statement that payroll is life. 
That's right. And this underscores the significance of payroll processes for the livelihoods of individuals. It emphasizes the need for heightened uh, cybersecurity measures to protect not only financial institutions, but the financial well-being of employees who rely on prompt and secure payroll payments and transactions. So at the end of the day, what's the big takeaway here? Whether you're a corporation, a business, or an individual, guard your data. Don't be distracted. I know you are busy. Right. I know you're busy with work and with life, but this is a part of your financial wellness. This is a part of you being protected, protecting your family, protecting your children or your loved ones or your partner or what, your dog or whatever, protecting you, whatever it is, protect your data. You don't know where they're going to attack next. They're yep. attacking the water. They're attacking the banks. They're probably going to attack the food industry. They're going to attack this. They're going to attack that. Who knows where they're going to attack? So you need to be heightened on your security. And I don't want you now, I don't want you to be paranoid with everything. This stuff can make you paranoid, but it's something that you really need to think about because it is a tactic that hackers, other countries, people within the, the country use to get your data so they can help themselves. So just yeah. be mindful. Absolutely right. Now I have two things that I want to share real life stuff mm -hmm. to think about recently and this this is this highlights how important notifications are, right? Yes. Yeah. There's a notification on our some credit cards and and banking things where we can get notified of transactions above a certain amount, right? Mm -hmm. So if you but you really need to consider changing that to every single transaction, mm -hmm. not just oh I just want to know about transactions over twenty five dollars or over fifty dollars. Hello, hackers know this. So if they can ding your account for five bucks, five bucks, five bucks, and they see that there's no change, now they know that the notification is for over five dollars, right? They'll go to ten dollars. They go to that. So my mom recently got it, she was a victim because she had her notification at 50 bucks and they were hitting her for under that, and she didn't pick it up until the statement came. And wow. she was like, oh crap. I got, I didn't do all this. She saw the balance and like the, what she's, oh my gosh, she was terrified it, and it really shook her. But of course the insurance, everything, she immediately reported it. Thank God it was like in another state and it was very obvious that it was not her, but she recently, she made the change and now she gets the alert for every single transaction. transaction. Yeah. Hey, I know it's probably irritating to get those I know. little things for not everything, for me. but Shoot. I see, but... I'm like, I know what that is. Yeah, but you have to be that way. Yep. You have to be that way yep. in order to protect your data. So, yeah, sorry for interrupting, but yeah. No, I would, that, that was the point. That was it. Yeah. And also think about what Tabitha Brown said, right? She says she ticks and ties every single transaction, red lines every transaction on she, her body, all of it. She said her, her gift wakes her up in the middle of the night when That's money right. leaves her account. She's That's like, wait right. a minute. I, I felt it leave. I felt it leave. Can you imagine? <laughs> yeah. So the other one was, think about this, right? Me and my son went to dinner the other day and it's a holiday season, right? For us yeah. here in the US. And there was somebody out in the, the parking lot doing, playing music or something like that. And what I told him was, it that stuff annoys me because they're taking advantage of a giving season, right? And if you're an artist, like I have, and what I, and what I told him was, I have more respect for the New York artists that are out there every day, no matter when the season is. Now here, all of a sudden, during the holidays, you in the parking lot here in this plaza mall or whatever, and you playing music and what is it, panhandling, mm -hmm, whatever mm -hmm. they're calling it. I was like, see, that I don't respect that at all because you just popping out, you trying to play on people's emotions. And I said, yes. you got to watch out for that because that's what happens. Think about the, apply the same logic to hackers. They're yeah. doing it now because people are distracted, right? Yeah. They're, they are, they're spending more money. They're distracted with the holidays. They're stressed out about everything. So these yeah. little five, $10, five, $10, five, $10 in your trend, matter. 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 Oh, heck yeah. yeah. Cause think oh. about it, right? Mm -hmm. It adds up. Right. Yeah, it adds yeah you're up. absolutely right. Like I, I saw this one stat, this guy, he's a financial guy. 
and I research what he says to make sure he's like telling the truth. And, he, and sure. like he's been, I forget his name, but he basically said like the cost of inflation, like for groceries, mm-hmm. like t- 2022 was like the safe 50 bucks. Sure. And this year it jumped to like almost 80 for the same about, basket for the same mm-hmm. yeah pile of groceries mm-hmm. right so think about that the grocery the same groceries that cost you fifty dollars last year now cost you eighty bucks this year mm-hmm. yep. so that's a thirty dollar difference so that, like you said those five yeah. ten those dollars and stuff like that they, they add they, up they add up you know what yeah. I'm saying it yeah. adds up for sure so up. again be diligent look look at your your transactions what I do every few months is and I probably should do it more but is I download all the transactions from everywhere possibly that I, is mine and or is ours rather. And my wife hates it because she started, she thinks I'm like, hey, I'm like, so I'm like, oh, babe, what's this now? What's this now? People get a little, what, 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 mm-hmm. what? You know what that is. I'm mind, mm-hmm. mind your damn business, whatever. But that's how you catch little things, right? Because you have to look it the when you download the transact, you, then you analyze it, look at it by group it. You got to get some analytical skills there and okay, are these all the vendors that I use? This makes sense. Amazon, click, boom. Am, oh, yep. I go to Amazon. But even that you want to match your transactions to your, to your orders on your Amazon box to make sure yes. that you actually ordered all this stuff. Let me um, give, things let me, like let me give everybody a tip. Let me give everybody a tip. Go for, like, of they, course. You know, the gift cards, the physical gift cards that are in the store. Yeah. So now people, what scammers are doing is they're taking a bunch of those home. They're stealing them because there's nothing on them. There's you can no steal them, them easily. Yeah. What they do is they open the packet and you know how the little serial number there is for mm-hmm. the card. But what they're doing is they're taking that out. They're cutting that piece off of the card. So mm-hmm. this, because all you need is the strip. Yep. Because the strip is still there. So you can take that digital number. That's what you need to load the money on the card. And some people, if you don't check the package, those people will actually have the part of the car that has a strip and they'll take those things back to a different store and put them there. And if you're not checking it and the cashier is not checking it, they just scan that car and you add a hundred dollars to it and somebody goes to go open it and they only see that digital part that you use to at the store to load the money. And the person is getting that, that car that the scammer is getting that those funds on the other piece of the car that they oh have. Oh my God. That's how yeah. it works. Yes. Because you sent me the thing over the weekend. Yes, yes folks, yes. This, is, this is all we do. We, we prep for yes. the show all the time. When he, I didn't understand. I, maybe I didn't watch it all the way, and that was my fault. But I was like, I don't get it. But okay, that makes sense. Holy yes. crap. Yes. Holy crap. People, yes. It's not just digital attacks. People mm-hmm. are out here. Everyday life, you, you're just trying to bless somebody during the holidays, and you're getting robbed by somebody else. Be mindful, just a little helpful yeah. tip. And yeah, I don't know if you said it, but you got to make sure that you got the whole. Oh, what did the cops say? You like when you're make checking sure out, yes, make sure there's make an sure entire card in there, or, or ask the cashier, hey, can we go ahead and open it so I can just yes. see that the card is in there? Yeah, that's right. So that's right, especially shoot, carry the clip around. Look, yes. I need to see, I need to make sure the card is in there. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Oh, my thank yes. you for saying that because again, yeah. I saw the clip and I'm like, I don't get it. Yes. <sighs> Chock full of good stuff this season, folks. Unfortunately, again, it's yes, it's a season of giving, but unfortunately, it's also a season of taking. Um, yes. So let's be mindful. Let's be vigilant. You know, be on guard. Be on yes. guard. You know what I mean? Be, be on guard. Be yep. Don't be Trust but verify. Don't be so busy that you can't protect yep. yourself. Don't. Yep. We all have some time. We That's have right. five minutes. We can check something. When you're on the... Not to be too gross, when you're in the bathroom, <laughs> you're on, usually on your phone anyway. Yep, that's right. You're on your phone anyway. Yep. So Plan, planning time. some time. Yeah, planning yes. some time. Well, no doubt, man. That was great. We love you guys. Happy holidays. We're still in this holiday season. Mm-hmm. Thanks for listening. Check us out next time. See you next time, folks. See you. Peace. As we near the end of this episode, we'd like to extend our heartfelt gratitude to you for listening. Before we sign off, here are a couple of quick things. Don't forget to follow It's About Payroll on LinkedIn and It's About Your Paycheck on Facebook and TikTok. We love engaging with our audience and you'll be able to receive exclusive updates and behind the scenes content. Thank you for being a part of our payroll community and thank you for being a part of this journey with us. Until next time, keep learning, keep growing, and most importantly, keep going.